go right in here, Colin. Colin Jensen may be an exceptional little toddler, but his parents, Ann and Jesse, are also delighted to be able to say he's normal in every way. He's been through quite a high-tech medical journey to get here. The dramatic changes that we see before and after uh, just quite rewarding. Colin has a condition that affects about one in 2,000 infants called craniosynostosis. Simply put, the seams between the bones in his skull, the sutures, started to fuse and harden too early. So if the midline one closes, for example, you can imagine that the skull cannot become wide anymore. It just becomes long and narrow. The cosmetic concerns are obvious, but in more severe cases, increased pressure within the skull can affect vision, the ability to swallow, to sleep, and even cause permanent mental impairment. If there are multiple sutures diffused, there is a higher chance of having problems with the brain um, becoming constricted uh, if we wait after one year. So that we try to pick this up early on. Plastic surgeon Samir Mardini is co-director of the Craniofacial Clinic at Mayo Clinic. Dr. Mardini says for years, doctors have attempted to repair the condition surgically by rearranging the skull's bones to give the brain and other structures of the head enough room to develop normally. It takes great skill and a little bit of guesswork, but before Colin ever made his appearance here, we also would make it wider. Dr. Mardini and his team had already performed the operation here, virtually. They designed in a computer exactly what it would take to help Colin. So when we go into the surgery, we know the outcome we're going to end up with. And if you planned it right and you take the proper steps, you're going to end up with an almost perfect shape. Computer software compares CT scans of Colin's skull with a virtual composite of many other babies the same age as Colin. You can see here an overlap of the uh, normal, which is the one in red, onto the abnormally shaped skull. So we start looking at, at the uh, skull to see uh, where we can make the cuts in order to achieve that. And you can see here we've marked all the bone pieces, we've marked the cuts of where we want to make them. The computer doesn't stop there. It duplicates Colin's skull in plastic, which then allows biomedical engineers to create a template that serves as a cutting guide. This fits right onto the patient's skull. We draw out the marks based on these lines. Dr. Mardini's multidisciplinary team includes a pediatric anesthesiologist to monitor the infant's vital signs and fluid loss and the delicate touch of brain surgeon Nicholas Weijin. Dr. Weijin was also part of the virtual surgery planning to make sure there are no surprises. My primary concern is to protect the baby's brain and their, and their the coverings over the brain as well as the blood vessels. We're making craniotomies, uh, cuts in the skull right around the brain and, and he has to be there to, to make those cuts. The entire top of the skull is removed then carefully sawed into segments just as the planning design dictates. Next, the pieces of bone are fitted into a custom mold, also made by computer, to reconstruct the new normal skull shape. They'll be held in place with resorbable plates and screws while Colin heals. Dr. Mardini says the ideal age range for this procedure is 9 to 12 months, when the bones are solid enough to work with but not too thick. Also, the gaps between the bones tend to fill in very nicely at that age. We can get the shape we want and then it solidifies. A few months later, Colin is looking great. You can barely see the scar, huh? Uh, yeah. At all. And normal paves the way for anything his bright future will allow.